mitigation of pressure and density changes and distribution of inner energy in a stationary wells uh, we will attempt the lecture and it is the success of the lecture is totally based upon the electricity and availability of the network but we will attempt it <coughs> anyway uh, okay so in the present class we will have two different articles from our syllabi that is investigation of pressure and density changes at displacement nodes and anti nodes while talking about displacement nodes and anti nodes means simply nodes and anti nodes we are familiar with in a stationary wave and another one that is important one article that is distribution of energy in stationary waves so uh, let us have first one that is investigation of pressure and density changes at displacement nodes and anti nodes see uh, when any wave uh, mechanical wave may be progressive or stationary wave is to be set up in a medium the media or the medium must be elastic now here if we are considering a fluid in which stationary waves are set up means the fluid is elastic one okay so if fluid has volume elasticity <clears throat> or volume elastic constant e say it let us denote it by capital e and if dy by dx is the volumetric strain produced in the fluid due to creation of stationary wave then we can express the excess pressure that is produced in the fluid as simply multiplication of volume elasticity and volumetric stress so in this way excess pressure or change in pressure that is created in the fluid fluid due to setup of stationary wheels is simply given as minus e into dy by dx where e which can be expressed in terms of v and rho uh, velocity and density that is v square into rho and it is volume elasticity while dy by dx is volumetric strain strain since we are related with the change in volume now let us recall the case of open end pipe in which uh, we know that the volumetric strain is given by the formula minus 4 pi a upon lambda sin 2 pi x by lambda into sin 2 pi v t by lambda by putting the value of dy by dx <coughs> as uh, as in the case of open end point uh, open end pipe and putting the value of volumetric strain as v square into rho we have excess pressure formula for excess pressure and change in pressure as equal to 4 pi a v square rho upon lambda sine 2 pi x by lambda sine 2 pi v t by lambda now here the term v square rho upon 4 pi a by lambda it is independent of x and t let us call it as p it is familiar to amplitude or uh, amplitude of change in pressure so we can put p equal to p max into sine 2 pi x by uh, lambda sine 2 pi v t by lambda uh, where v max uh, where sorry p max is the constant that we have shown here okay now here p max is amplitude and sine 2 pi x by lambda is the position dependent okay uh, trigonometric term so we can call p max sine 2 pi x by lambda as the complete position dependent change in pressure or excess pressure and let us denote it by px so we have change in pressure or excess excess pressure equal to px into sine 2 pi vt by lambda where px is uh, we can call here as the position dependent pressure or amplitude of pressure variation at any point x from the interface that is open end of the pipe and this is simply equal to p max into sine 2 pi x by lambda okay now from equation one one thing is clear that uh, the p excess pressure varies with time t and it varies uh, with some period and it varies harmonically with some period and if we have to calculate the period so period is simply given by 2 pi upon omega and we substitute omega in terms of v by lambda it will be 2 pi v by lambda and after solving you will find that uh, so it is simply lambda by v where 
lambda is wavelength and v is velocity the same as that of the component wave okay so we we know that the stationary wave is produced due to two component waves one is incident another is reflected okay and both have the same or uh, that is period and that is equal to say lambda by v and here also the uh, excess pressure also we find in the stationary wave also in the medium due to stationary wave also equal to lambda by v so excess pressure has the same period as that of the component wave now let us test the excess pressure at anti nodes and nodes at anti nodes we know that the strain dy by dx is simply equal to zero and if we recall the case of open end pipe we find that it is the situation where sin 2 pi x by lambda the trigonometric function has value zero related with position has value zero now if we substitute this uh, in equation say one we will find that p uh, in equation two then we will find that p max into sin 2 pi x equal to zero since sin 2 pi x equal uh, upon lambda equal to zero so p x equal to zero so excess pressure or change in pressure is zero in other words there is no change in pressure or density or pressure and density remains constant or remains normal at the anti nodes okay so one result at anti nodes now what about the nodes at nodes we have seen that dy by dx is maximum since dy by dx is maximum uh, and this is the situation when sin 2 pi x by lambda the trigonometric function related with the position has at its extremities at its maximum values and that is plus and minus 1 by substituting this in the expression of px we have px equal to plus or minus p max okay now if we substitute this px in expression of p we find that p equal to plus or minus p max into sin 2 pi vt by lambda what does it means it means the pressure and density varies greater or less than the normal value at nodes okay so at anti nodes we see that uh, the pressure and density remains constant or has its normal value while at nodes now we observe that pressure and density varies greater or less than their normal values now what is the situation at other points at other points pressure and variation is simply given by the expression okay that is p max into sin 2 pi x by lambda into sin 2 pi vt by lambda now important to note that p max into sin 2 pi x by lambda is always less than p max therefore pressure and density changes at all times are less than those at nodes that means at nodes the changes are maximum at nodes the anti nodes there are no changes and in between the changes are given by equation 3 okay so uh, we know that the anti nodes are the points where this in the anti nodes are the points of the stationary wave where displacement is zero okay and here we observe that at anti nodes pressure and density uh, undergo maximum variation of pressure hence anti nodes of displacement are nodes of pressure okay and similarly we have the statement for nodes so anti nodes of displacements are nodes of pressure and vice versa okay so this was about change in pressure uh, at nodes and anti nodes uh, small article we have studied and now let us concentrate upon the distribution of ener energy in a stationary wave first of all uh, we will discuss the theoretical concepts about the distribution of energy in a stationary wave okay we are familiar with the stationary wave and progressive wave and we know that when a progressive when there are two progressive wave in a media where both have same amplitude and period but traveling in the okay opposite direction we call it as one as incident wave other is reflected wave and then a stationary wave is produced okay what does it means it means <clears throat> the 
energy total energy per wavelength in a stationary wave is double that in a progressive wave because there are two progressive waves uh, required to construct a stationary wave okay and energy in each progressive wave is considered to be added and stationary wave has energy per wavelength double that of the progressive wave another important thing is that though the energy per unit length in a stationary wave is double but there is no flow of energy in a stationary wave why because if you are looking at the energy currents the incident wave has energy current in in one direction exactly in the opposite direction the reflected wave has equal energy current so energy currents of incident and reflected waves are equal but in opposite directions so therefore the net energy current in a stationary wave is zero and therefore there is no flow of there is no flow of energy in a stationary wave so resultant energy transfer in a stationary wave in any any direction is simply equal to zero okay now in a progressive wave uh, we know that half the energy is kinetic and half the energy is potential at any instant what is the situation in case of stationary wave in case of stationary waves the ratio of kinetic to potential energy is same okay but uh, same at any place but it changes from instant to instant so this is the another point we must remember about the energy in a stationary wave uh, another thing is that the energy is all kinetic everywhere uh, in a stationary wave where the particles are at equilibrium positions uh, and at this moment the most of the energy is at antinodes and we know that at antinodes uh, the particles are moving with maximum velocity okay so the energy is kinetic everywhere since the particle has velocity is uh, velocity as maximum okay and when the particles are at extreme positions we know that their velocity is zero but they have maximum displacement so therefore their energy is kinetic energy is zero but the energy is true totally potential and is maximum okay and at all intermediate positions okay between nodes and anti nodes the energy is partly kinetic and partly potential the same thing we will resolve by the analytical treatment that is mathematical treatment for this purpose consider a case of stationary waves set up in a open end point open end pipe the displacement is given by we will recall the same equation here that is y equal to 2a cos 2 pi x by lambda sin 2 pi dt by lambda and differentiating this expression with respect to time t we obtain the velocity and that will be simply equal to dy by dt as 4 pi a v by lambda cos 2 pi x by lambda into cos 2 pi dt by lambda where what is okay now if rho is density of the medium okay uh, that is uh, when, when i will call it as density of the medium it will be mass per unit length okay and if if we consider a small element of the medium of thickness delta x its mass will be simply rho into delta x where rho is density of the medium and mass per uh, mass of the layer uh, mass per okay mass uh, length of the layer is or thickness of the layer is delta x so it will be equal to rho into delta x that is mass and change in kinetic energy will be equal to half m v square that will be simply half uh, rho into dx into dy by dt whole square okay now what will be the kinetic energy of the whole of the uh, wave of the length say l that will be integration of this delta k from for the whole length that is from 0 to l and as you can see here the steps of integrations are given here and after substituting the value of dy by dt here we find the situation uh, what we have done here that all quantities uh, which are independent of position uh, are taken out of integration and in integration we have only cos 2 pi x by lambda which depends upon position so uh, we can solve this cos 2 pi x by lambda 
okay and uh, here after solving we find that in integration it is 2 cos square 2 pi x by lambda into dx and uh, what is this 2 cos square uh, 2 pi x by lambda it will, it will be simply 1 plus 4 pi x by uh, lambda and after solving this integration we find that integration 0 to l dx will be one term and plus another will be integration 0 to l cos 4 pi x by lambda uh, dx since cosine is the function of period 2 pi so 0 to l cos 4 pi uh, integration for cos 4 pi x by lambda dx this will reduce to 0 and integration 0 to l uh, dx this will be equal to l so in all integration 0 to l 1 plus cos 4 pi x by lambda dx will be equal to l and we have the change in kinetic energy as equal to rho into L, four, uh, 2 pi AV whole square cos square 2 pi Vg by lambda. Okay. Uh, if we are calculating this kinetic energy per unit length, that means per unit area we have already calculated here K. And if it is again to be calculated per unit length, that means per unit area into length, that means per unit volume. So it will be simply k divided by l let us call it as k dash as it is shown in equation one and it will be simply equal to rho so l cancel out rho into 2 pi a v by lambda whole square into cos square 2 pi v t by lambda okay so in this way uh, we have calculated kinetic energy per unit volume now what is the maximum value of this kinetic energy per unit volume this will be maximum when trigonometric function cos square 2 pi vt by lambda in equation 1 uh, will be maximum and what is its maximum value it is either plus 1 or minus 1 and square will be simply 1 so maximum value of kinetic energy that will be simply equal to rho into 2 pi av upon lambda whole square and this will be simply equal to average total energy per unit volume Okay, and in this way, we have expression for average total energy per unit volume as equal to rho into a bracket 2 pi av by lambda whole square. So we have obtained total energy and uh, uh, total energy per unit volume and kinetic energy per unit volume. We can obtain the, uh, in this way, average energy per unit volume in a progressive wave. Uh, okay, sorry, we are familiar with the expression for average uh, energy per unit volume in a progressive wave and that is simply equal to half rho 2 pi av upon lambda square. This formula we have equation 3, we have obtained from the previous chapter. Okay, now if we compare equation 2 and equation 3 here straight forward, uh, uh, we find that uh, equation 2 is double that of equation 3, that is energy contained in a as that is average total energy per unit volume in a stationary wave is double uh, that of in a progressive wave or uh, average energy per unit volume in a progressive wave is half uh, that of in the stationary wave okay uh, that what we have uh, uh, considered in uh, what is a theoretical concept that has been proved mathematically here okay and uh, what about the potential energy potential energy uh, at any instant that will be equal to total energy subtracted kinetic energy. So average potential energy per unit volume uh, can be obtained simply by the uh, subtracting uh, average kinetic energy from total energy. And after solving here, after putting the values and after solving, we find P equal to this. And uh, in this way, from this equation, that is equation three and equation four, we can conclude that Kinetic and potential energies varies with time, but the ratio between them is constant and this ratio changes from instant to instant and it is independent of place. So, uh, here we will conclude the session. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the session. Thank you very much. <laughs>